said amen. 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 Why don't you just give the Lord an ovation of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Anybody ever heard of a realist? Everybody heard of a realist? Anybody know what a realist is? A realist is a person who accepts a situation as it is and is prepared to deal with it accordingly. Uh, a realist, you might say a rationalist or uh, something like that, they're all about the same. They do and say and believe things that are logical, things that are obvious, things that they can touch and see. Someone would say, I believe in the natural. I believe in what I can feel, what I can grab hold of. I believe in uh, this right here. I, I believe in, well, not exactly this, but what's underneath this. <laughs> I believe in uh, this earth, the thing that you're standing on, the thing that seems so concrete to us, the same thing that uh, is rock solid, the thing that is really hanging on nothing. It has no foundation. It has no fixed or attached point. It is balanced on nothing. It sits on nothing. It rests on nothing. It hangs only by the faith of God. Amen? It rests upon His Word. It sits in the middle of His will. It's the earth. The Word of God, Job says, He stretches out the north over the empty place, and He hangeth the earth upon nothing. Hebrews 11 and 3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You know, that really doesn't make sense. How do you make something out of nothing? How do you make something out of nothing? It doesn't make sense unless you understand faith. Understand that God had nothing to work with when he began creating in Genesis chapter 1. And all he had was his word. <laughs> what he wanted did not exist. What he was trying to accomplish did not exist. There were no materials there for him to to work with. He had no blueprint. He had no architect to tell him how to put it together. He had no bank to back him up. He had no advisors and no counselors. He had no mentors. He had nobody. And I'll tell you something else. All that he had was nothing. So you know what he did? He spoke it into existence and made it all of a bunch of stuff that didn't exist. He made it out of nothing. He hung it all on nothing, and we call that nothingness outer space. It is nothing. And it's still there today, resting for however many years it's been up there. And the same intricate balance, the same, I saw, saw heard someone talking one time, if it was, the earth was pointed at some degrees this way or degrees that way, we'd either freeze or burn up. But it's all balanced perfectly and God did it with nothing. Nothing. You see, God is not a realist. 
God does not operate in the realm of realism as we think of it. Practicality is not in his vocabulary. His miraculous works are never attached to something called reality as you know it. Hebrews 11 and 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God and that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. How do you do that? How do you make something out of something that no one can see? How do you build something without the materials to build it with? Brother Vincent, I'd like for you to build me a chair, but I'm not going to give you anything at all. you got to build it out of nothing. Ladies, I'd like for you to bake me a cake, but I'm going to give you nothing to make it with. You can't use nothing to make it with, but you got to make a cake. How are you going to do it? How do you create when there is nothing to create with? If you can't see it, how do you make something out of nothing? You do it through faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were made of things that do appear. If God had not had faith on the day he started creating things, I don't believe nothing would have happened. You see, you and I would not be here today had God not used something called faith, not reality. Faith. You see, here was the reality, Genesis 1 and 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. Nothing. It didn't exist. It had no form. It was void. What does void mean? It means emptiness. Nothing but darkness. There was no light anywhere. There was no hope anywhere. There was no possibility anywhere. Just Empty darkness. You know what that sounds like to me? That sounds like hopelessness. That sounds like despair. That sounds like the last place someone might expect something real to happen. You know, we all we, we need to be careful what we call real. Because what we call real could very well be a genuine miracle. Look at this earth right here. A lot of people call this earth real. You know what this earth re really is? It's a genuine, bona fide miracle from God. Let me tell you something. I don't believe that there's a realist in this room. I don't really believe that there's a realist on this planet breathing today. You might say I'm a realist, but guess what? The next breath you take tells the truth about that. You know how many times you take a breath? 12 to 18 times a minute. Your chest goes up and it goes down. Everybody try it. Good. It does that because of faith. It believes that it is going to receive something that it needs to survive for five or six more seconds. It's faith. We breathe air, nitrogen, 78%, oxygen, 21%, argon, 0.9%, CO2, 0.3%, water vapor, and other, other small chemicals in there. Too much nitrogen? It ain't going to work. Nitrogen narcosis will occur. Deadly. It's like having many strokes all over your body. Everywhere. You get too much oxygen. You might experience headaches, confusion, nausea, sleepiness, coma, even death. If it was all oxygen, we wouldn't be able to breathe. We've got a very small very small range in which we can function as human beings. 
below 15% oxygen and we're in real trouble. Much over 21% we're in real trouble. You know what happens when you get over 21% your body starts oxidizing. It will rust, Brother Jordan. <laughs> Not to mention that oxygen is explosive on top of that. Too much CO2 or carbon dioxide and you experience nerve damage, coma, or death. You see, this equilibrium of gases in our atmosphere had to be just right so that we could breathe, so that we can take this thing that we call faith and take a deep breath. It's faith. It's a balance in itself. It's an amazing miracle from God. And so you know what I do? I reach out about 12 to 18 times every minute to reach out for that phenomenon of breath and air and oxygen and the, what I need in my body. My lungs are reaching out for that wondrous miracle that God provided for us. You see, I, I, I realist will gasp for air every 12 to 18 times and he's reaching out for a miracle from God. By faith reaches for something that only God can provide to us. The Word of God says, And God blew the breath of life into the nostrils of Adam. Romans 1.17 For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, I read it earlier. For we walk by faith, not by sight. I know that there are some in this building that are looking at some things that are very dark. I know it looks bleak. I know that there is not much to work with in your life. Anybody ever been there before? Been in situations that you didn't know how you was going to get out? Been in problems that you didn't know where the answer was going to come from? Is it just me? Tough crowd today, ain't it, Mom? I seen the look on her face. She's thinking, man, this church is not getting with Pastor today. She's right. <laughs> She's thinking, man, Tommy Clark, what are you doing? <laughs> My God is worthy. Yes, amen. 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 Whether you say amen to this or not, it's the truth. Amen. Whether you're getting behind pastor or not, it's the truth. <laughs> you know what? The devil would like nothing more. He would like nothing more to come in and disrupt the service. He'd, not, he'd, he'd like nothing more than to come up here and aggravate the pastor. Right? right. Distract the pastor. Amen. He'd like nothing more than distract you. Right. right? But I believe that God has something for this church and this service. That's why Satan doesn't want to get involved. He doesn't want you to get involved in service. He doesn't want. Tracy, can you send Dallas? 
knew I was in trouble. Yes. And I was sitting there begging the doctor. I said, please, 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 let me go home. Please help me to go home because I've got a wedding. My friend said it's getting married in two days. Please let me go home. And she said, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. I'm going to have to send you by ambulance to the hospital. And it, that's what I'm thinking about the breathing. We have to breathe, but I'm so thankful that we have a God. Have a God that when we're in that situation, that He can come on the scene yes, and fix whatever problem He's got. I believe it with my, my whole heart. Amen. Amen. There may not be much to work with, right? There wasn't much to work with in mom's situation, but God. Right. See, we got to understand something. Faith does not need much to work with. It doesn't need much to work with. In fact, I believe that all God needs is faith. All he needs is your faith. Hebrews 11, 4 and 5. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Verse 5, by faith, Enoch was translated. Hebrews 11, 7, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of the things not yet not seen as yet. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, going to a place. By faith, he sojourned to the land of promise. All God needed was his faith. By faith, he forsook Egypt. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea. By, by faith. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. By faith, the heart of Rehab uh, perished not with them that believed. By faith, David took a sling and slung it through the air. By faith, they did these things. What is it in your life that you cannot see past right now? What is going on in your life that you feel like is destroying you, that is blocking, that is nothingness in your life? Let me tell you something. If I listened to my circumstances uh, in, in the past, oh, I would have never, ever, ever heard the voice of God. If I lived by my circumstances before, I've tried that route, Brother Tim. I've tried. I've looked at my situation and just kind of accepted that this is what it is. Well, this is where I'm at right now. This is it. This is the best it's going to get. You know what that got me? Nothing. It got me nowhere. It got me nothing. I've sat at a desk full of bills and no way to pay them. Come on. I've been there. I've sat in that trailer on Oma down the road. My head like this. How in the world? Come on, I've added up the late fees. Seen the over limit fees, the interest. You know what it got me by looking at that and staring at it? And you know what it got? It got me depression and worry and fear and anxiety. Right? Come on, I've been there and done it. Most of y'all probably been there and done it. I pray that everyone in this building, everyone under the sound of my voice, learn sooner than later how the kingdom of God's economics works. Let me tell you something. God spoke to me some 14, 15 years ago while my dad was preaching a message. I can't remember how many years ago. It was when we were at the Nazarene church over there. And he preached a message on tithing and giving. And I clearly heard the voice of God saying to invest in the kingdom of God. You cannot ever go wrong when you invest in the kingdom of God. It will come back to you 
tenfold. I considered my education, you know what it brought me? Nothing. Come on, I tried using my intelligence. <laughs> what are you laughing for? Did y'all hear that? I mean, she just went to get it. That's my help, man. You know we're one. You know that, right? <laughs> no, I just said, no, no lie. I considered my intelligence. Sure enough, you know what that got me? Nothing. Come on, I've tried using my own strength. It got me nothing. It got me nowhere. I've tried doing it my way. Come on, I tried doing it my Many of you have tried doing it your way. What did it get you? What has it gotten you so far? Keep on trying it your way. You know what it's going to get you? It's going to get you nowhere. It's going to put you in nothingness. Why don't you try it God's way? Try it God's way. Come on, many of you, you've been trying it your way for years now. Let go and trust God. Let go and trust God, people. My Lord. Most of the time when I tried it my way, guess what it did? Put me in a worse situation. By faith, on the other hand. <laughs> faith in him faith in his word faith in his purpose for my life faith in his promises to me now that got me somewhere faith you know what faith did faith brought me a beautiful intelligent wife see I, I, I'm not chatting at you <laughs> That's what faith did. Yes. Faith brought me two beautiful children. Yes. Faith blessed my finances. Yes. Am I rich? No. But faith has blessed my finances. I'm better off today than I was 15 years ago. I'm in a better place right now than I was 15 years ago. I got clothes on my back. I got food in the pantry. My bills are paid. None of them are late. Bless God. I've got a car to drive. I've got a job. My God has been good to me because I trust Him. I put my faith in Him. Faith has blessed my ministry. Fifteen years ago, 14, 13, however long it was, I came to this church and sat under Brother Tim as pastor. And I sat there and I learned almost nothing, not most everything from him. <laughs> <laughs> right now. I know you'll have it later. <laughs> no, I sat and I learned. And I sat and I made mistakes. Come on, I probably caused him more problems than he wants to even talk about. I messed up. I'm not even going to tell about something. <laughs> but you know what? By faith, he blessed my ministry because I trusted him. I said, Lord, I'll go where you send me. Lord, I'll walk where you take me. Lord, whatever it takes, wherever you want me to go, whatever doors you want me to open up, and come this November, five years ago, this coming November, my God blessed me to be the pastor of this
this church, and he has continued to bless me over and over and over again. Faith! It's done more in my life than I could ever even begin to tell you about. Every breath I breathe is a reach into the unknown for a miracle. Some of us here need God to do what we cannot do by ourselves. Some of us here need a miracle from God. Am I a realist? No, I don't think so. No, sir, I am not a realist. You know why I'm not a realist? Mom, because I need a miracle. Come on, church. I need a miracle. You know what I need? I need what your eyes can't see. I need what my eyes can't see. I need what you can't even imagine happening right now. We need what we can't even imagine. We need the things that we can't feel or touch or see or taste or hear. I need a miracle. This church needs a miracle. I'm reaching out, Brother Tim, for the unknown. I'm reaching out for the things that I can't see. I'm reaching out for the things that are out there that no one else knows about. I'm grasping for the unknown. How did I get so blessed? How did this church get so far and do so much in the last 15 years? Is that how long we've been here at the church? 17, 18? Wow! 20 years. Man, time is flying by. How did this church get so far in the last 20 years? How have we grown so much in the last 20 years? How have we... How did we get this church with just a couple of thousand dollars in the bank and remodel not only the front up here but the back and, and then pay the building off all in just a short span of time? How did that happen? It didn't happen because we were realist. It happened because we believed God. We put our trust in Him. We put our faith in Him. I know living for God Sometimes many people try to make it sound like you're going to be dancing through field of roses after you receive the Holy Ghost and you've been baptized in Jesus' name. I'm not one of those preachers. I'm not going to lie to you. Right? right. The Word of God says it rains on the just and it rains on the unjust. Many times good things happen to bad people and bad things happen to good people. You say, well, then why do I want to live for God? I'll just put it to you like this. I can't imagine going through the things I've gone through in my life without him. Jimmy, I can't imagine you going through the things that you've gone through without him. Right. 
Because the faith that I have in him is that he said he'll never put more on me than I'm able to bear. And he will always provide a way of escape for me. So when the pressure gets too much, or the pain gets too much, or the hurt gets too much, I have faith in my God that he will... purpose in our lives. Oh, I don't know about you, but I'm reaching for some things that aren't there yet. Come on, we got to let faith begin to operate. We got to let God's will and purpose become aligned. And, right? With our will. We got to let our will become aligned with His will and His purpose. I talked about that in Kingdom Life today. You see, there's people in this building, you need to get your eyes off of your circumstances. Come on, you're so far focused on your circumstances and your problem and this right here. You need to get your eyes off of your circumstances and believe God for the impossible. Yes. Put your faith in God. And Brother Tim will come to the music. In all the years that I've been in ministry and been around ministry, being raised up in a pastor's home, I don't know how many times I've heard people complain that they have too little. They got too little money, too little health, too little time, too little resources. My house is too little. My cars are too little. You name it. Not enough of this, not enough of that. I've never one time, not ever one single time, Brother Jim, not one time have I ever heard someone say they have too much of any of those things. I've never heard anyone say, I got too much money. I just got too much. I never heard somebody say, oh, my car is just too nice. I, just, I got too much car. My house is just too big. I just... Anybody ever heard someone say that? I'm just too... I, I just got too, way too much. I can't deal with it. You know what? I think we've been living on the wrong spectrum, the wrong end of faith. I think we've been looking at darkness and void for too long. How about we begin to operate on the other end of this thing, where faith is creating things out of stuff that none of us ever knew even existed? Let's get ourselves aligned with God's purpose. And then let's start speaking the same things that He's speaking. Faith. How do I earn my living? Faith. How do I pay my bills? Faith. How do I give my tithe? Faith. How do I stay out of debt? Faith. How does my ministry reach people worldwide? Faith. How is this church going to have a revival of souls? Faith. How do we plan on reaching the community in this city and surrounding communities? Faith. 
how are you going to be saved? Faith. How are you going to receive a blessing from God? Faith. How are you going to receive the Holy Ghost? Faith. How are you going to make it? By faith. How are some of you going to get the victory? By faith. How am I going to get healed? to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. First of all, you got to believe he is. You got to have faith that God is. What does that mean? That means that he exists. That he's real. That he's out there. That he created all of this. That he created you. That he's giving you the breath that you're breathing right now. That he woke you up this morning. That he set you on your way. You gotta believe that he is. You gotta have faith that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Key word here. First of all, you got to believe he is. Second, you got to believe that he's a rewarder. How many believe he's a rewarder? Thirdly, you got to believe he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. If you're not diligently seeking him, why do you expect a reward from him? Come on, I can hang out here for a little while. If you're not diligently seeking the face of God, if you're not seeking after the things of God, if you're not trying to live your life for God, why do you expect Him to bless you? Why do you expect Him to reward you? Why do you expect anything from Him at all? Because I believe that He is, and He is a rewarder of those that seek Him. and act like he doesn't exist. Not a rewarder of those that sit back and pretend that he's not there. But a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. very much. I know we're into all this reality TV and everything out there right now, but let me tell you something. Reality is not offering you very much. Right? The things of this world, it doesn't really offer you all that much. But faith, on the other hand, Faith in Him is promising so, so much more than what we could ever think or even imagine. Why don't we stand on our feet? Brother Jordan, I'm sorry. I went longer than I told you I was going to go.
this building, you might be facing a trial. Things may look bleak in your life. tell you to put your trust in Him. Don't put your trust in the things of this world. Stop putting your trust in men. Stop putting your trust in women. Stop putting your trust in your children or your grandparents. Stop putting your trust in your job. Come on, your job will fail you one day. Your friends will fail you one day. Your husband, your spouse, or that man, or that woman, they will fail you one day. Stop putting your trust in the doctors. Stop putting your trust in those medications. Stop putting your trust in those drugs. Somebody in this building, you need to start putting your trust in Jesus Christ. You need to stop being a realist and looking at the things around you and putting your trust in the things of this earth and start understanding that my God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. Thank you. 